I won't ask you again. Please stop murmuring. Some of you have stopped it, but I can still hear a few women murmuring. The reason most of you came tonight is about to arrive. He wishes you a particularly warm welcome if you are ethnically diverse or gender fluid, but makes no special effort to welcome straight white males because they always turn up. Please welcome a man who needs no introduction but is entitled to one, Dr. Alan Gordon Partridge, a.k.a. Alan Partridge. People say, you know, all rappers, all rappers sing about is Bentleys and big backsides. So what? 
We all like a nice motor car and a pretty bottom. <laughs> he does. Big smile on his face. <laughs> and who doesn't like bling? I love the bling. Yeah, I've got a gold carriage clock at home. <laughs> bit, of, bit of attitude on the mantelpiece. Yeah. But rap's nothing new. I mean, we, we all used to rap at school, didn't we? <clears throat> Ooh, ah, I lost my bra. I lost my knickers in my boyfriend's car. <laughs> oh, and, uh, now rap seems to all the time. Soon it'll say, uh, there'll be signs saying things like, Norwich welcomes careful drivers. Motherfucker. <laughs> Actually, uh, it's best not to use that term in Norwich. <laughs> I know, I know that motherfucking is something they're trying to discourage. <laughs> and we wish them well. But, and it's a big but, he's smiling again. <laughs> Dirty Dilbert. Uh, that's kind of what tonight is. It, it's a fun way to share knowledge that I believe will change your lives. You're here to learn, right? Not just whoop and clap like Ainsley Harriet and his kids' nativity. <laughs> and please don't say this isn't what you paid for, because you were given fair warning, it's right there on the poster, just beneath where it says, wheelchair access is not guaranteed. <laughs> if you have a negative attitude, you're not prepared to work, we politely request that you do not attend. <laughs> Sorry? Well, I, I don't have the time to check every venue for wheelchair access, do I? Why? Because I'm learning a bloody rap! <laughs> what would you rather do? Make sure everyone's got wheelchair access and not do a rap. Think. <laughs> okay, let's begin introducing my very own life management system, Stratagem Silhouette Dance. Let's get it on till I heard him on. Got his own foot, just turn it on. You'll shake that thing, miss. Can I, can I shake that thing, don't? Okay. <laughs> Stratagem, or new ways of thinking in a post-COVID world, is a life management system that will improve the quality of your lives. And a warm thanks to my sponsors, p and and Bet365. <laughs> <laughs> Please do remember, gamble responsibly, as you could lose your house. Or you might win a bigger one. Have a flutter. <laughs> Been told to say that. Uh, now, to protect their brands, I've agreed to limit the bad language in this show. Um, I'm allowed to say six bucks, um, including that one, so five more. <laughs> and uh, two cunts, uh, including that one, so that leaves me one more. Um, I might not use them all. Uh, in which case they roll over to Glasgow. <laughs> when they will be needed. <laughs> well, let's talk about Stratagem. Stratagem has already helped people like Stacy. <laughs> Stacy felt undervalued in a workplace dominated by men. But now she gets to sit in on board meetings with them and write things down. <laughs> You show him, Tracy. Or Andrew. He used to wet the bed. He was a chronic mummy's boy. But now he's dry as a bone. Saving up for a new motorbike. And a mattress. Or Dean. Dean didn't know how to talk to women. Now he approaches them all the time. <laughs> Lynn Benfield. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I don't know why you wolf whistle. You're not allowed to wolf whistle anymore. Um, I don't know why you, anyone used to wolf whistle in the olden days. Um, Dan! Sorry? Dan. Dan. Yes, da da Dan. Dan. No. Da Dan. 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 Let me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dan's dead. <laughs> he, uh, he thought it would be funny to shout things out from the audience, and he was set upon by a group of angry uh, audience members. <laughs> okay. Um, Lynn Benfield. 
a, a dowdy woman who works for me and has a number of problems, most notably not making the best of herself. <laughs> She's regularly mistaken for a dinner lady. <laughs> But after a quick makeover from me, helped. <laughs> and how? I mean, last time I saw a dinner lady like that was at the Hard Rock Cafe. <laughs> and there are dozens of others. Doug, Sam, Trish, Mike, Mel, Mark, Rick, Jim, Jan, Jen, Jack, Joe, Jed, Dominic, Edwina, Big Quentin, and me. <laughs> yes, I've used stratagem to tackle some of my fears. It's simply a case of breathing deeply and adopting the right attitude. <laughs> because with the correct attitude, nothing is beyond. Fucking hell. <laughs> Find your inner calm and you can overcome anything. We're all broken, but there's one grand old dame who's more broken than most. It's this old girl. <laughs> Lady Britannia herself. She's on her knees, literally. <laughs> I drew that. Whether it's in the Midlands, with it's difficult to digest Stoke, the irritable bowel that is London, <laughs> the needy hands of Wales, <laughs> and not forgetting the screaming baby that is Ireland. <laughs> and if that weren't enough, she has deep mental problems in her head. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Wherever you look, things have gone tits up. Which I know you're not supposed to say in these gender-sensitive times, and yet you can say cock up. It, it's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> but it's all very, it is all very fluid these days. I mean, these days women can have cocks. And I know for a fact men can have tits. <laughs> just, from, uh, just from taking a sauna with Eamon Holmes. <laughs> And, but there are still differences between men and women. I mean, if, a, if a, a woman has a dildo in her handbag, these days it's seen as very feminist. But if someone finds a rubber vagina in a man's hand luggage, my goodness, the hull of a loo. I miss my flight. Because we all have problems. And I'm no exception. At the age of 16, I was diagnosed as medically gormless. <laughs> An affliction I still suffer from today. If I go on a Tinder date with a woman and she starts talking about her kids, my eyes glaze over and I go gormless. <laughs> I'm also sad because a woman I was in love with broke my heart, but I don't want to talk about it. And, uh, and my dog died. Yeah. Yeah. I know, there he is, best dog in the world. Yeah. They don't make him like that anymore, because uh, it's illegal. <laughs> now, I'm going to wander down to the audience now, just to make people feel a bit anxious. Uh, I've become something of an expert on face interpretation, um, and I've got a very interesting face. A lot of people think I have the face of a friendly neighbour. <laughs> you can imagine me kind of leaning over the garden fence saying, I'm going to barbecue. <laughs> Let's have a look at some of the faces down here. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, this chap there. He's smiling and laughing. Oh, yes, he's very excited. He's laughing a lot, but behind his smile, he's saying, Help me, help me. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, yes, now this man's face here. Now your face here tells a story. <laughs> and it's quite a long winded story. It doesn't really go anywhere. So I'll we'll move on from you, see now. People are terrified I'm going to pick on them, which I am <laughs> going to do. This woman's smiling here, but her, her smile is saying, I'm angry at myself for making poor life choices. <laughs> and uh, let's see, now I, this is very simple, this is very straightforward. Uh, this man's face is quite simply, classic cafe. <laughs> 
it's a minor reflection, a minor reflection, it means I like classical music, but only if it's being on the app. Okay, so let's see. Off we go. Get it on till you heard of my God in the South. Just turn me on. You'll shake that thing, Miss Panic, and I'll shake that thing. Go. Okay, before I uh, tell you more about strategy, uh, a few frequently asked questions. First, why are you dressed like that? <laughs> Easy. Um, in choosing my outfit, I was guided by one simple question What would Christ wear? <laughs> if he was Steve Jobs. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Someone in the audience the other night looked at me and said, Alan, you've literally creamed yourself. <laughs> he was escorted from the building. <laughs> I'm also uh, quite proud because I designed the set myself. Yeah. I, I, interesting story. I loved Meccano uh, as a child. I used to build things all the time, and one of the best things I ever made was a women's prison. <laughs> and it's sort of based on that. You can imagine, can't you, a very bossy lady screw walking up and down the gantry, banging on the bars and saying, Come on, girls, bedtime! <laughs> I don't know how they talk. Um, second, can I go to the toilet before the interval? No. <laughs> Is there a lack of diversity in your audience? Hell yeah. <laughs> but I'm taking steps to address that, along with my partners in the National Trust and the Countryside Alliance. <laughs> and I'm getting there. I'm getting, I think my, my, my ensemble has a pretty good balance. I think it looks like an advert for Benetton. <laughs> the National Trust, not doing too badly. <laughs> Making some progress. But, uh, but the guys at the Countryside Alliance, um, they're struggling. <laughs> it's baffling. It really is baffling. I mean, they, you know, they made a start. I mean, look there on the end. That's a woman. <laughs> is your home vulnerable to burglary, given that you're on tour? People know. Um, no, it's not, because I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> Got eyes on the gap 24-7. <laughs> ignore that woman. That, that's my assistant, Lynn. She's, yeah, she's, uh, she's there as a sort of visual deterrent. <laughs> sort, of, sort of mobile scarecrow. <laughs> well, mobile-ish. Um, I think I know where she's going, but I had a camera fitted in the biscuit cupboard. Gotcha! It's like Springwatch, isn't it? Here comes the female, scavenging for food. Largely herbivorous, with a diet rich in cheese and onion pie and peas. She's picked up the scent of chocolate hobnobs. Oh, what's this? Ah, yes, Jaffa Cakes. She is pleased. One more look, and she's off. She will feed well tonight. <laughs> Soon the rains will come and she will go on about it for ages. <laughs> I'm not sure what she's doing in uh, looking at my record collection. Shall I shall give her a quick call. I mean, she won't listen to my records. I mean, unless there's an Irish man in a rocking chair on the cover to get it. <sighs> come on, Lynn, it's in your handbag. Lynn Benfield. Lynn, uh, all quiet on the Western Front? Hmm? I am, Skipper. You're not thinking of rearranging my records, uh, are you? Eh? Only to pop them in alphabetical order. They're all higgledy piggledy. Well, I don't know how you order your five records, but these are ordered by genre. How do you mean? Rock, soft rock, pop rock, prog rock, cock rock, hip hop, and the seekers. <laughs> Actually, forget it. I know you only have two genres hymns and not hymns. <laughs> by the way, that friend of yours, Daryl Flinch, has been talking about you again. Oh yeah, go on. He was on the WhatsApp group telling everyone you've forgotten how to drive a car with a manual gearbox. Vicious bastard! <laughs> He's trying to destroy me, Lynn. I need to retaliate. Didn't you offer him the use of your camper van for a week in the summer? Yes, I did, yes. Go on. Then I suggest you withdraw the offer. Right, he was going to take his kids to Wales. I think it's the only week he has custody. Well, they'll have to go away with their mother. See how he likes that. Len, you would have made a great secretary for the Gestapo. Copy that. <laughs> okay. 
Sorry about that diversion. Um, so why, why stratagem? Well, because it worked on me. You see, one day last year, my mind, like freshly milked Rice Krispies, went snap, crackle, and then pop. <laughs> Pictured here at the launch of the new Range Rover Vogue, I looked at the very image of contentment. I had the world at my feet. I was on first name terms with the whole of the Range Rover Norfolk dealership. <laughs> they even introduced me to Top Gear's Richard Hammond, who, although medically short, was able to mingle by carrying round a small step. <laughs> Yet inside, I'd begun to feel something was missing. My friend Bill, who has one eye bigger than the other and is pictured here on my left, <laughs> said, Alan, you're like a cat, always landing on your feet. I said, then why do I feel so empty inside? He said, Alan, I only want to talk about the new Range Rover. <laughs> and with that, he wandered to the buffet. Inside, I began to feel something was missing. I began to ask myself, who was I? Where had I come from? Well, where had I come from? I mean, obviously there are different ways to answer that question, depending on how far back you go. Oh, uh, the shower. Norwich. Mum's vagina. <laughs> but for me, the search for answers began last June. I was clearing out my garage to turn it into a one-man squash court. <laughs> And whilst I was umming and eyeing over whether to throw out a picture of my children, <laughs> in which they looked quite ugly, I stumbled across something that was to change my life. It was a letter I'd written to my future self when I was 11 years old, and I'd love to read it to you right now. <laughs> Dear Alan, I pray this missive finds you in good cheer and that the travails of life do not weigh heavy upon your weary brow. <laughs> yeah, I was a bit of a tit. <laughs> I wonder what becomes of me. I'm only 11, but I imagine in 50 years from now you'll have gone on to do great things. Tick. <laughs> and live in a big house. Tick. <laughs> With children who love you dearly. <laughs> I often wish I could ask your advice, as some of my classmates are disruptive, particularly those from broken homes. <laughs> there should be special schools for illegitimate children, <laughs> called simply Bastard Academies. <laughs> I was a very right-wing little boy. <laughs> Kind regards, Alan G. Partridge. P.S. Please keep this letter safe, as humidity can cause the pulp to oxidise. This is known as foxing. Adorable. Well, as a stratagem exercise, I wrote a letter back to my 11-year-old self. I so wish I could offer the young Alan Partridge some words of encouragement, but of course, that's impossible. But then I remembered, I love theatre. <laughs> Over the years, I must have seen somewhere in the region of 10 plays. <laughs> From the stage version of Bad Girls to the stage version of Only Fools and Horses. <laughs> and everything in between. So what if tonight, theatre could be our time machine and take us back to the past? And you'll have a fair idea of what the past is like just from living in Leeds. <laughs> but by using the power of theatre, I will send this letter that I've conveniently folded into the shape of a paper plane back through some sort of time portal to the boy I once was. All you need to do is believe! Whoa. <laughs> Go back in time. Oh, the Twin Towers are down. 
and crack the space-time continuum and enter the fifth dimension or something. <laughs> Jesus H. Christ, theatre is mind-blowing. <laughs> Wait, I can hear someone coming. Hold fast. Don't know what that means. <laughs> oh, look, it's me. I loved combining skipping and karate. <laughs> and I'm in my favourite parka. I had no peripheral vision, but it protected me from the bullies, unless they punched me directly down the snorkel. <laughs> Here come the school bullies now, Leonard and Neville. Here, yeah, Alan, can we have some crisps? Leave me alone! You've got full beds. We didn't get no breakfast, being from broken homes and all. Yeah, our dads ran off. Stop bullying me! I work hard to afford these crisps. If you don't have the motivation to get a paper round, I'm afraid there are consequences. Fine! Have the crisps! You scrounging bullies make my life a misery! Oh! oh there's my letter! Read it! Read it! <laughs> Wait! Don't go! Who's that? My God, he can hear me. I love the power of theatre. <laughs> Who is it? It's Safety Gate. <laughs> Wait! 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 <laughs> it's Alan Partridge. I'm you, but for the year 2022. Take off your snorkel parker so I can look at me. <laughs> yeah, that's me, all right. <laughs> Golly gosh. Why have you come here? I've come from the future to give you some advice to tell you that this bullying will stop. Although it does happen to me again when I'm married. Who are you talking to? Oh, just some people from Leeds. Is that where you live? Jesus Christ, no. <laughs> What's it like in the future? Do they still have the Royal Yacht Britannia? I'm so sorry. It was decommissioned in 1997. <laughs> it is now a floating museum in Scotland. Those poor royals. I do hope nothing else has gone wrong for them. <laughs> uh, nah. Uh, but it's, it's you I've come to talk to. You have to knuckle down. More application and less dreams and big ideas. Don't you mean fewer dreams and big ideas? That's my boy. Good grammar's more important than fancy ideas. I do so enjoy correcting people. Wait, talk to me. <laughs> but what about the bullies? Oh, forget the bullies. Leonard ends up as a labourer and in 2004 falls off some scaffolding to his death. <laughs> Thought he was too cool to wear a safety harness. Well, I'm sorry, but what goes around, comes around. Well, which is precisely what I thought. You, know, you reap what you sow. Exactly. I couldn't agree more. I love chatting with you about personal responsibility. <laughs> and don't listen to the bullies. You're a smashing kid. Oh, I don't know. I'm not a fast runner, or a gifted scholar, or one of the handsome lads. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Look at me. You're the most handsome boy in this school. No, I'm not. I mean it. Can I have a hug? <laughs> okay. Seriously, you, you look sensational. <laughs> Would you like another hug? No, no, not yet. Anyway, uh, run along, you silly little boy. 
Well, in, in reality, of course, we can't talk to our younger selves, which is a shame because anyone who doesn't learn from the past is doomed to repeat it, from people who don't labour <laughs> to men who dye their own hair. <laughs> but if I don't learn from it, what will become of me? If only I could find out. What am I talking about? I've got a fucking time machine. <laughs> Set the coordinates for 2065. <laughs> Arriving Norwich City Centre, 2065. <laughs> Norwich City Centre? But why are there no people here? It's a deserted wasteland. Good God. They finally went and did it. They pedestrianised all of it. <laughs> Bad fools! I love the power of theatre. But wait, I set the coordinates for my future, so my older self should be here. But, but where is he? You are in a restricted sector. You do not have a permit. Please, I mean no harm. I look a bit like a wasp. <laughs> yes, I can see that. Do not be alarmed. It's uh, just a uh, voice synthesizer that's uh, built into the helmet. Wow, you sound like a cross between a Dalek and uh, Stephen Hawking. Yeah. So, uh, that would be Davros. Quite unnerving, actually. But, uh, might change that. Yes, do, do something nice. Now, who are you and what are you doing? Well, it's, it's me, Alan. How do you know my real name? I've used the name Alan for years. I'm known as... Uh, five. <laughs> That's a bit weird. You're known as Er uh, Five. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, five. Well, uh, well, anyway, what I'm saying is, Alan, I'm, I'm you. You're me. I'm you. Impossible. It's not impossible. I, I've, I've, I've travelled through a time in a machine in the magic of theatre from the year 2022. Oh, no, this isn't a trick. You could be anyone. All right, then. Uh, ask me anything about your life from before then. Very well. Back in 2018, what feature of the new Range Rover impressed me the most? <laughs> that the armrest doubled as a cool box. My God, <laughs> you are me. <laughs> um, do you have to loom over me like that? You remind me of a lunch I had with Richard Osman. <laughs> Very well. Uh, would you like me to change my size and perspective? If you wouldn't mind, yeah. I mean, I'll come up and join you. Please stand back. Man reducing. Please stand back. Man reducing. Last time I heard a sound like that was when Eamon Holmes ate a burger too fast. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. D don't, know, don't know what it means, but wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love this outfit, by the way. Why do you wear those gauntlet sleeve things? What's that all about? Everyone wears gauntlet sleeves in cyberspace. Cyberspace? I don't understand that. I mean, how old are you? Uh, 105. N nearly 105. Wow, well, I've got to say, you look good for 105. I've never looked or sounded better, thanks to an Intel Pentium processor. <laughs> 